Hello, we're in St Paul's Church today and we're thinking about the season of Lent. And one of the clues that it's Lent is the colour purple on this cloth and on the altar behind us. Because different times in the church year, we have different colours in church to remind us of where we are and what we're doing. And Lent is the colour purple because we're thinking of a sad time in some ways and it was the colour of mourning. But purple is also the colour for kings and so we think of Jesus being our king and purple reminds us of that. So why Lent? And it tells us about the 40 days when Jesus went to pray and think and fast in the wilderness. And Lent is our season for doing the same thing. And it lasts for 40 days, just like Jesus's 40 days in the wilderness. So we begin with perhaps what could we call it, clearing away the clutter, thinking about what's wrong in our lives, what we might need to put right. And that's where Shrove Tuesday, or Pancake Day, comes from. <laughs> because to, to Shrove comes from the Old English shriven, which means forgiven. And people would go to church on Shrove Tuesday and think about all the things they might have done wrong and wanted to put right. And then they would get a blessing from the priest. And because they were going to be fasting, giving up things in Lent, Shrove Tuesday, was when they ate up all the good perishable stuff in the kitchen to go on to a light diet for Lent. And so they'd scoff their pancakes with eggs and milk and things that might go off if they weren't used. And then Ash Wednesday, the start of Lent. We make ashes out of a palm cross that you burn. That remembers the palms that people waved to welcome Jesus into Jerusalem. And people are signed with the cross on their forehead at the start of Lent. Because ashes, again, was a sign in the Bible of mourning, of repentance, of thinking about what was wrong and how to put it right. And as Annie's going to tell us, in olden times, you might give up a lot of things in Lent. But these days, I think with the pandemic and having to be in bubbles, we've given up a lot. So some people are choosing to do things in Lent that are nice and kind. Annie will tell us about that in a minute. Hello everyone. I have a new friend that I'd like you to meet. She's new and she's just joined our bubble. Hello there, good to meet you. What's your name? Really? What a coincidence. It's Annie. That's the same as me. It's really good to meet you. Okay. You've brought something that you'd like to show us. Is this it? Ah, oh, that looks very interesting. It looks a bit like a Lenten tree. Is that right? Oh, I see. Okay. So these little pieces of paper on here, each one of them has got a kind act written on it. Is that right? Okay, brilliant. Well, there are only a few on there. Okay, so there were 40 of these on the tree. Yeah, and that's one for each day of Lent. Okay, so some of them have already been done and there's just a few left. Okay, I'd love to have a look. Shall we read one? Let's see. What does this say? It says, for today, make someone laugh. That sounds like fun. Okay, let's have a little look at another one. What else can we find? Share a story. That's a nice thing to do with somebody, isn't it? Yeah. Okay, yeah. I need to explain that traditionally in Lent, people would give things up, maybe some chocolate or some sweets or some cake or something, 
but you decided instead of that to do kind things. I really like that idea. And um, it finishes on Holy Saturday, which is not very far away, which is why there are only a few left. And what happens then? Okay. On Holy Saturday, the tree is completely bare. And on Easter Sunday, oh, that sounds amazing. You're going to decorate it with some other things to celebrate Easter and the resurrection. That's fabulous. What sort of thing might you put on it? Okay. Gonna do a little hunt around the garden to find some things and maybe some things at home, bits of ribbon, tissue, do some drawing. Yeah, some little flowers or little birds. That sounds absolutely wonderful. Well, it's been lovely to meet you, Annie. And do you know what? There's something else that um, I think we share here, isn't there? You've got plants too. You've really enjoyed this, have you? She's really enjoyed talking to you. So thank you so much for listening and for watching. So bye-bye, everyone. Till next time. And then... We get to the end of Lent and we start what's called Holy Week. And that begins with the story of Jesus coming into Jerusalem, riding on a donkey. And then we come to Good Friday, which is the really sad day when Jesus was crucified on the cross. And why is that called a good day? Well, in this context, good comes from the, an old-fashioned meaning in English, and it means a holy day, a pious day, when perhaps you're being good and thinking about God. So that's why Good Friday. And then we come to Easter Sunday, and we realise that Jesus may have died on the cross, but that death wasn't final, because... Women came, come to the tomb expecting to make his body decent for burial. And the body is gone. And the risen Jesus appears to Mary Magdalene to show that nothing can separate us from God's love and that death is not the end. Let's just say this prayer for Lent. It's called Living Gently. Creator God, Thank you for the choices that we have, the freedom we know, the joys we experience, the purpose you give us. Bless all our living on this planet you have created. Help us to be informed, to think carefully and choose wisely, so that we may live gently on this earth and with each other. Thank you for trusting us. Thank you for Jesus beside us. Thank you for the Holy Spirit giving us wisdom and strength. Help us to listen to you, that we may live gently on earth and all creation praise you. Amen. Beautiful brokenness, hope for despair, Lord, in your suffering world, this is our prayer. Bread for the children, justice, joy, peace, sunrise to sunset, your kingdom For fragile lives, yours for their ills. Work for the craftsmen, trade for their skills. Land for the dispossessed, rights for the weak. Voices to plead the cause of those who can't speak.
Thank you. 